Hi, it's Tim from Tennis Head here. We are today going to be doing a match play masterclass. So this is a tactical guide to things that you can do during your matches. We are delighted to be joined by Harriet Dart. Harriet's one of the best female tennis players in the UK, if not the best, and one of the best tennis players in the world. So, you know, she has been there, done that. And she is a professional tennis player, that's her living. So her job is to work out how to win tennis matches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and suck out as much information from her brain as possible, which is gonna help you guys to win more matches. This situation is where you've walked on court to play a match against someone you've never played before. So you don't know how they play, uh, you don't know what their good shots are or their bad shots are. So uh, Harriet's just had a warm up with me. She's going to play a match against me today. We just warmed up. She's never played with me before, but she's hit a few balls. Um, in your mind, Harriet, for this first point of the match or the first mm -hmm. game, um, what have you started to think about for this match then? Well, firstly, I've definitely picked up a few things on, on maybe what you like. Um, obviously that can change during the match, so I've got to be ready to be able to adapt to that also. Um, but for me, you definitely prefer your forehand. Um, you were taking many balls from the middle with your forehand and also running around. You, I, th I think you maybe hit three backhands in the whole in the whole practice that we had. So I definitely think you favour your forehand. Um, haven't had the luxury of seeing you serve, but you're tall, so I assume it's going to be, a, you're going to have a big serve. Um, and yeah, and most importantly, focus on the things that I can control. Um, you know, I can't control how well you're going to play against me. I'm sure your level will will be good. Um, and yeah, I mean, for example, I'll start if I start serving, I'll probably serve much more to your backhand because you didn't hit many. And I'm thinking that you definitely prefer your forehand. Um, also, to build the point into your forehand to then open up the backhand um, because I think you'll guard a lot on the backhand side. So if I can pull you out to the forehand side, then you'll have a big gap on the backhand side. I'll probably try and um, work the points like that. Um, that's a, that's yeah. a key thing I think that amateurs probably don't realise is that to get to someone's weakness, you've got to go, go to, to their, their strength. strength first. 100%. And how do you know, how, how long do you go to strength? Until you think there's a big enough gap, I presume, you keep going. Until you get a good ball opportunity where you can kind of think that you can then dictate the point. You can add a little extra to the space and, and kind of take control of the point. And then during the warm up, because obviously most amateurs have a good five minutes where they warm up. W were you trying to size me up then? You were trying to go, right, actually, look, if I hit to his forehand, I can see that that's better than his backhand. You, you're actually using the practice for that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're always, you're always thinking about different things and um, also, yeah, just trying to suss you out because I've never seen you before. Um, so yeah, I think it's just important in that in that small time frame to pick up a few things. Um, usually, you can pick up things pretty quickly, um, but as well, like you could be nervous in the warm up, and then suddenly come alive in the match. And equally, um, you could peak early in the warm up, and then and the level go down. Um, but like I said, it's important to be able to adapt to a situation and. Um, you know, just because, for example, you hit one really good backhand um, shouldn't, shouldn't deter me from my goal of how I'm building the points, if that makes sense, because in the end, um, hopefully that should um, be a success. Yeah, I didn't really make you play the first couple of points enough, um, but then I raised my level and really just tried to zone in and make a lot of balls, make it difficult for you. And I felt like you had a small opportunity on a game point of yours. Didn't take it, I made you play. Yeah. Put, get, gave you a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Um, and then my goal on the juice point was just to keep, keep you out there. Yeah. Keep, you, uh, keep you moving and um, yeah, I managed to sneak the game. You know, hypothetically, this person you're playing is losing and they start doing those annoying little tricks, like their shoelace comes undone or, or their, you know, something in their eye. We've all played those sort of players. How, how do you deal with it? It's a good question. Um, well, I mean, we all have 25 seconds in between points, so it's quite a long time. Um, but I mean, that's so out of your control, so you just have to control with what you can control and um, the referee can, can deal with the rest. Um, but also not to get you know, riled up with it all, take your own time. 
um, refocus because it's easy to get distracted as well. Um, so it's just important to, to come back to the present. So that one, because it was a second serve, was it yeah. deliberately onto my forehand so yeah. you could open up my backhand? Yeah, and also, you know, majority of second serves you play to someone's backhand, say, and it's a, a shock, you know? Yeah. Because maybe you were edging okay. to cover your backhand and you leave okay. the... Okay. And I've hit enough on it that it's yeah. still aggressive enough. Yeah. Um, but really always look on the second serve to try and dictate off the return. This is, this is what the pressure is, having what people watch. I think that was game. game. Okay, I was 40-15 up, made you play the ball. It's, yep. not, it's also not easy to finish those balls because you think you should win the point, but also. And did you, so when you put the lob up, I think you were covering the cross court because is that the easiest smash for me to hit? So you were trying to force me or not? Trying to force me to hit down the line because it's a harder smash? Uh, yeah, yeah. And also because you're already going backwards. Yeah. And it's much easier to, yeah. to go that way than to go back forward. It's a really good sort of tactical, but technical tip that Harriet's just explained there, that the easier smash is generally to hit cross court. Yes, because the type of lob that I hit, you were going backwards. So it's much easier for you to go like this rather than to go from all the way back to then forward to go down the line. Um, so that's why I was covering the cross court. I gave you the line. And I thought if you can hit, if you can hit the harder shot, too good. You can have the point. And I think it's important as well in in all the points that you play. Um, if the person can come up with the harder shot, that you just say too good. Um, but usually to build pressure, you want to play the high percentage shots a lot, a lot of times. So then you build that pressure on someone because then in big moments, you know they're probably going to default to the, to the high percentage shots. And if they're able to come up with the, the tougher shots, again, you just say too good. We're done there. Fantastic. What some insight from Harriet there, which I think uh, the big thing I picked up was that during a tennis match, you've got to be flexible. You've got to understand that things change. Um, and also some interesting technical input about, you know, to, to achieve your tactical ambitions, you've also got to make technical decisions as well, uh, which uh, maybe some people forget about when they're playing. But, um, you know, if you had to leave our, our sort of audience with, with one tactical tip from the next time they walk on the match play court? Do you have something sort of outstanding which you would say, you know what, if you can concentrate on that in your next match, it will really help you? If you can just focus on each point and not to get too ahead of yourself, I think that's a really good um, trait to have, um, not getting too ahead of yourself. Because if I had, against yours, love fall down, if I get too far ahead of myself, it could be six love before I know it. And it was really important for me to just stay in the moment and to work my way back point at a time and um, not, to, not think too far ahead. Uh, and I think that plays on the amazing scoring system we have in tennis that it's really probably the only sport that it's not over until the last point has been won and we've all seen on TV you know people many times match point down and they come back and win and, and what Harriet's saying there is, is basically saying that yeah it doesn't matter if you're five love 40 love down you can still win that set if you just focus on one point at a time because that's all you can do yeah you can just 100%. influence the next point 100%. okay well thank you ever so much good luck thank with the rest you. of the season um, and um, yeah we'll see you all soon thanks for having me